As historians, we're constantly looking at different types of documents, trying to learn more and more information about the past. Um, and more often, one of the documents historians are turning to are visual documents. Instead of looking at text, they're actually starting to look at visual documents and getting information about the past from them. One of the most interesting types of visual documents historians actually use is actually artwork. Um, historical artwork can really help us learn about the past. It gives us great insight as to what the artist was thinking at the time when they made it. Um, so it can often be a primary source. Um, but it, artwork isn't always the easiest thing to analyze and figure out. So I want to kind of give you some strategies and some insights as to how to pick apart artwork to help you get more information from it. So a lot of times we'll find ourselves looking at artwork um, from the past and it's difficult to figure out what the artist is even painting about, not to mention the message that they're trying to send. This is a great example of that. This is a famous painting by Salvador Dali. And many people look at this and say, I have no idea what this is about. Here's another painting um, that's relatively famous, and many people look at this one as well and say, I just don't get it. What's going on here? What is the author even painting about? What are they trying to tell me? So I want to get the point across to you that if you don't know what you're doing, art can be really confusing. It's tough to figure out the message. But with a little help and a little training, you can actually begin to notice some clues that artists leave behind in their artwork to teach you more about the past and give you the message they really intend. What makes it tough though is these clues are often really, really subtle. They're tough to notice. And if you don't look in the right places, you can easily miss them. So I'm gonna show you an example of a piece of artwork um, that can actually teach us about the past and I'm gonna model it and take you through it and show you how I would pick it apart. And hopefully you'll get some tips to help yourself as well. So what I'm going to do is I've actually taken a bigger piece of artwork and I've zoomed into a small corner of it. Um, I do this to myself because if I don't, I'll, I'll tend to look in the wrong places for the clues. Um, I want to be able to notice the subtle details in the background because they give me lots of information I might miss. So this is the upper right hand corner of a drawing. And in this piece of artwork, what I'm seeing so far is sailboats. And I'm noticing we're probably along the coastline um, of some kind of island, maybe. Um, the clues I'm looking at, I seem to see some land here, maybe the, the corner of a palm tree. I see water, and I see sailboats. Um, it gives me an idea that maybe this is a tropical place, um, but it's definitely not the North Pole. Um, it's also definitely not modern times, because I see sailboats. If it were modern times, I'd expect to see um, things like speedboats and engines. That's not what we see um, in this picture. We see sailboats that are really elaborate. They're not modern sailboats, so clearly this happened in the past. Um, so that's a detail I might not have noticed if I hadn't zoomed in here. So let's keep zooming out and getting more information. So I can confirm that there actually is a palm tree here, so we're in some kind of tropical, warm climate. Um, it is a coastline and the boats are still there, but what I'm beginning to notice is the people in the picture, and especially how they're dressed. If you look at how they're dressed, they seem to be wearing some kind of armor. They wear helmets, um, they're carrying weapons like spears and swords, um, and this gives me some clues as to, man, I wonder what's going on in these pictures. Clearly these people are not there to be peaceful and nice. They're there for some kind of war or conflict. Uh, so let's keep zooming out and seeing what we see. <clears throat> so as we zoom out, you'll notice the things we started with really are a small part of this artwork and if we had started wider, like in this section, we might have ignored these things. But as we zoom out, we do start to notice more and more stuff. For example, we see more people with spears and armor. It seems almost like an army getting off these boats. So again, it reconfirms the idea that they're not there for peaceful purposes. Um, we notice mountains in the background. I'm not sure what that means. I also see some shadowy figures in the background here. Some people that clearly aren't as important as these people. Otherwise, the artist would have made them bigger, would have made them closer, would have made them more detailed. You can see how blurry they actually are. The other detail I'm starting to notice is at the top of the ship, I see a cross. 
Um, and if I think for a minute, where I've seen crosses before is in Christianity. So clearly these people are Christians. And that gives me an idea of where they might be coming from. Maybe from Europe, because that's where Christianity really starts from. Um, maybe from North America, we just don't know. But we definitely know that they're Christians. All right, let's keep zooming out. So now what you see in front of you is actually the entire piece of artwork. And you'll notice that the items that we were looking at before are very, very small. They're in the background, and they're easy to miss if you're looking at the giant picture right now. Um, but it's important to notice their size. There's a reason the artist made them small. They're not as important as the people that are bigger, more detailed, and in the foreground, not the background. These people right up here are clearly the most important people in this painting. Um, how do we tell? Well, they're the largest usually, and they're in the center of the painting. If they weren't that important, notice these people right here and this person right here. Where are they looking? They're looking at these two individuals. The focus of this painting really seems to be on the center right here, these two guys. So these are the two most important people, the people I want to focus on the most. Um, it's clear that this person belongs to this group because he's wearing the same type of clothes with the armor, the helmet. He's got, it looks like maybe a baton or a sword. He's got a sword case hanging down here. He has guards with spears that may have come from this group. Um, this person almost looks European too, but they're not as dressed as um, in armor as this person right here. Um, as we look at this painting, we start to make some, some educated guesses as to what this might be about. Based on the fact that I see a Christian cross, I see a coastline with sail ships, um, and it's in a tropical or warm climate with, um, with people that are here for conflict, I can actually make an educated guess that this is a painting of Christopher Columbus's arrival in Latin America. Um, you can see that um, here, and it makes a lot of sense based on the information we have. Before, I might not have had any clue who these two guys were. I wouldn't have noticed the Christian cross. I wouldn't have noticed maybe the armor on these guys. I wouldn't have noticed the sailboats. But because I took my time and broke it down, I really got to know this painting a lot more. And it gives me a lot more information about this actual event. I could look at this and start to ask myself, well, what did the artist think of Christopher Columbus? Clearly he thought he was there for military purposes because he's wearing armor and carrying weapons. Um, clearly he thinks Christopher Columbus is more important than Latin Americans, because who don't you see in this picture? And the obvious answer are all the Latin American people. It makes me wonder if these people right here are Latin Americans. So, that's how I would do it. And this works out for just about any piece of artwork you can look at. The key is to just break it up. Don't look at the whole picture all at once. Take it piece by piece. If you do that, it helps you see the bigger picture and notice the subtle details. Some other tips I've listed here that you can take a look at. Um, it's important to notice that artists make specific choices and intentional choices, and sometimes they leave stuff out on purpose. For example, in the artwork we just looked at, they didn't have Latin American people in it, except for maybe in the background. You have to start to ask yourself, why did they do that? Um, it gives us an insight as to who the artist might be. Was the artist and a European person? Someone who liked Columbus? Someone who hated Columbus? Um, we don't know, but we can look at these clues to figure that out. We also notice that the artist didn't use color. We should ask ourselves, why didn't the artist use color? Um, that's important. Maybe if they had used color, they would have had to use the color red, which would have made Columbus look bloody and evil. I don't know. But these are clues that we can pick up on that will help us better understand history and the piece of artwork we're looking at. All right. Thanks a lot.